Already setting a yeah, summary with a smoke, reality with an HE, and looks like they're going for a quick B play here. I'm interested to see what they do. Yeah, so set up. It's a typical 1 2 2. Spermy already first contact, and Smoke's gonna play a huge role. And while well, she's playing it so well, it gets a first kill. That's gonna be the bomb carrier, followed by Frio Bandito struggling to find this kill. Two bullets, make that one, and the last is gonna do, but Tanharu is actually gonna trade out that player. But mind you, Lennox next in line. It's kind of like a gladiator system. They actually pick up another bomb carrier, and now just down to Mo Chilla and Swan. Swan actually finds one kill, but he gets traded out by Lennox. And now Mo Chilla, 33 HP, stuck in a tight place. He's got a P250 though. That may just be the only advantage he has. He picks up another kill, 18 HP. Oh my god, this could be doable, AWOL. A 1v1 situation. Now I'm going to keep it on Mochilla. As he... It's the fake plant. I'm actually going to turn off the x-ray too. He won't. Nope. It's just like that. A little tickle through the crotch and uh, he goes down. <laughs> Pretty exciting round there. Impre <clears throat> impressive play by both teams, honestly. I'm surprised that it ended up turning out so well because the strat... While it had good intentions, double smokes onto the site, uh, the T's really didn't gain any gain, gain that much map control because while she was just such a pest behind the statue, just delaying, giving his team time to rotate and such. Yeah, honestly, like they played that smoke so well, right at the beginning, but um, now Robert Morris University they're gonna have the typical setup, but the fast play into drop, and Molotov actually does a little bit of damage, substantial to Brito, but. Well, she unable to sort of match against that CZ. Scrub's gonna pick that up. And now these guys are all in connector. They need to deal with Spermy though. He's gonna get the information, gets one kill, wants to get the second, but his teammate Lennox from behind. They actually regain control of connector, and the bomb has not been seen. Swan and Tonharu. Bomb should go down. He needs this bomb actually. Get $800 across the board, but no, gets denied by reality. We'll find a 3k in this round. So, pretty simple stuff. Uh, right, Tezro? Like, not really too much to say. Like, yeah, I, I mean, guess the, the effort the, was The there. round started off well. The round started off really well. They had a nice molly to molly off E-Box. But the problem they ran into there is that they got that perfect kill. And uh, as T's, once you get that connector control, I mean, that is just the ideal situation for a T side. You split you split the defense. And you've created a really uh, uncomfortable situation. But what ended up happening is that they kind of split up in two groups of two, and yeah. instead of taking one bomb site as four, they, you know, really cut themselves sh cut themselves short on that. Yeah, I guess like splitting themselves two two like that, they just wanted the bomb plant. But in the end, the guys for Long B just took way too long, and here we are. It's the third round. It's gonna be a full eco. Lennox uh, playing around the deagle, but gets dinked up down to twenty eight. And Swan looking to find it, and he will get him into the knee. Picks up a U, uh, actually an MP9, but still a lot of work needs to be done if they want to gain advantage. There's a rifle being bought here. Spermy's got it. He's actually doubled up towards Long B, and AWOL holds drop. Now, mind you, Georgia State they're definitely like striding their hearts out. They 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 want this bomb plant. They've got some picks uh, early on in these in these rounds, so let's not count them out. And, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, that Lennox peak there, I don't know if you watch much basketball, but in basketball, they'd call that a heat check when you take like a three from really deep. And for me, that's what Lennox <laughs> just did there. He took a heat check. He's seen it. He's on right now. And, you know, that's a, that's a big kill to get because if Lennox is going to hold W against you and just rip your heads off, that's not a good thing. So it's it might be bigger than you think, like mentally for the uh, for the Georgia State. That's a more of a mental victory right there. They didn't let Lennox just push or just run them over with uh, his MP9 oh. or his D. -ball. Oh, yes. Now, four players of Georgia State University making their way towards the A site. Well, she's deep, and AWOL's gonna make the first contact, but look at that. A bomb gets denied right away. And while she's trying to hold on, it's got nine bullets, but they actually take him out right away. Bomb should go down. Nope, I lied. It actually gets denied very well. Mo Chilla, though, with a 3K. This is potentially. Nope. Time. Time is everything. Gets the Holy kill. Holy shit. Mochilla is so nice with the P250. Oh my yeah. god. 4K for that man. On his POV the entire round, and he was just walking around the site, just ripping off heads. That's definitely a CSL top 10 play right there. That was like, really nice. Going back to what you said, like that meant the mentality, right? It's, uh, they didn't let Lennox run over them, but then again, they lose the round, but they kill all five players of Robert Morris. Yeah, so. Look at the RMU money. They're on. They're on nothing. And scraps. They're tattered. Yep, so now nice aggression. One... Drop that. Check that out. Oh my god. One of the most important rounds. Smokes down. It's the same situation for pistol, but 
There are rifles in both hands and both sides of the reality peeking out, but he actually finds a close player. Tanharu finds a kill. Swan actually gets the trade off. And AWOL on the big flanker Rooney. And Frito Bandito needs to reload here. AWOL's gonna take advantage of that. No damage done to that man. He finds a second kill as they swarm the site together. Robert Morris University essentially a clean retake with a 3v4 situation. That's just an absolute collapse there. <laughs> absolute collapse. They were in Army started off the round by playing pretty, I'd say pretty improperly. Reality and Spermie, they, I'm sure Spermie realized that he made the call for the quick drop play to get a wall flanking. And the second that happens, the bombsite guys need to just play passive, stay alive, and let a wall win the round for them. And they didn't, but at the end of the round, a wall just made a huge play, and the T's just re looked a little bit uncoordinated right there. Yep, and now hopefully Georgia State can kind of capitalize. They're getting a good start in the rounds, but let's see how this op works out. It's uh, Swan. I remember how insane this guy is against my players. This guy would literally hold W running around with the op, but against Robert Morris? I don't know if he can do that, but starting off, Spermie's going to find Frito Bandito, and that was the only player to really peek out towards the B side. Tanharu, maybe regress, but... The bomb making his way towards middle, and Lennox is going to hear these guys towards uh, the mid there, and he's going to hold this off. Mochilla, oh, he looks away. The flash is, in a sense, late. Mochilla gets one kill, but he gets a second kill as well, as well. She picks up Scrub Wrecker. Spermie smoked off completely. He won't peek down inside. He's behind APC, but Tanharu able to find... Reality who was close by. Now, it is a 2v2. You gotta give Georgia State, but look at this. Tanharu right behind these guys in Spermie. He's actually very smart to this, and he will win that duel. Now, just down to Swan with the op. Finds the, the second last play. That's AWOL. 40 seconds to go. The bomb's on his back. And this is definitely a doable round here for Georgia State. And Spermie is taking a sweet time. And oh, it's a sweet time indeed. He gets. The best of Swan, but three peaks and oh my god. Tezro, I'm gonna ask you. Swan gets, you know, taken down to 39 HP, but he re peaks that. Like, what's going through his head? I mean, what's going through his head right there is that he, he thinks either that Spermie's reloading or Spermie's just gonna hold W chasing him because he thinks that uh, Swan's just gonna book it to the site to get the plant down. But uh, definitely a weird angle to peek from. I'm not sure if I agree with that. Yeah, knowing Swan, he actually probably well went through, uh, went for like a no scope. Probably assuming Spring would chase him. But look at this, Lennox gets punished for that aggression he's done the second time now. And now that causes a two man rotate onto the A site. Now the bomb technically has been spotted, but pretty early on in the round. And I really can't see. Oh my goodness, they're making so much noise though. If they commit to this, this would be a huge mistake. Well, she flashes so good. Two players blind as Helen Keller, but Swan able to find two kills with the CZ. That's a huge play. But now the man advantage for the first time in this map for GSU. And that's where we equalize it out. AWOL gives them the advantage. And now Swan once again in a 1 3 2 and gets shut down by AWOL. That's 6 0. Um, Tezro, I'm going to tell you right now, these rounds are really fast. And, you know. Judging by GSU, do they want these fast, like, executes these fast rounds? Like, why might that be? It just seems like GSU really just wants to take the fight to Robert Morris quickly. And it's working to a certain extent, but they're just falling down at, like, you know, just at the end right there. In each round, it seems like. It's yeah. interesting. This is definitely their play style, though. And they're going, looks like they're going for a fast uh, B smoke. Maybe just to bait out you some utility right now. That well, she gets boosted up. It finds fruit. That's the scrub record to go down. Molotovs exchange to each other. And like you said, GSU with that fast execute, fast plate, it is working in a sense. If anything, I'm actually surprised that GSU's been getting it quite, you know, these, these frags. You know, the economy for RMU hasn't really built. There's, you know, the next player 2750 and 2200 after six rounds in a row. But, trusting uh, to the skill here, Robert Morris, they have a two-man advantage into this round. 
finding two pretty aggressive peaks, one towards drop and one... But check out Lennox right now. He's uh, he's doing exactly what he loves to do. He loves pushing oh, yes. uh, off of like off of uh, aggression on the other side of the map. Could, he's in a great position right here. And he's going to pretty much sandwich these guys. He gets so much information, right? And Swan, though, with the op, has to find some kind of space towards long B. And RMU, nothing aggressive. They've done it at the beginning of the round. They don't need to towards the end. And, and execute towards drop. It's going to be really nothing going on. The players just drop for free. And Swan is going to drop by not firing his op. So five players up for RMU in that gun round. And the max loss bonus has been capped at five rounds. And it's not really going to be a buy here for GSU. You know, it's something like, that we failed to mention before the game, but GSU last season, um, four of their players, all of them minus uh, Tanharu, all played on a main team together. So they shouldn't be, you know, void of strategy together. They, they shouldn't ah. have the amount of synergy with one another. So I'm surprised to see, you know, them playing just kind of one dimensional. They're not really adjusting to what uh, Army's throwing at them. That's very true. Hopefully, uh,. These guys will maybe put in a pause and try to figure out what the setup is here by Robert Morris. But, oh, scout play. Mochilla able to find two shots onto Welshie. It's actually a two for two trade. And these guns can be picked up as well. It's an AK upgraded here for Mochilla. But now, where do these guys regress? It's lots of time on the clock and towards, oh, long B, Spermy. Wants to rotate back after reality was given up. But the op towards uh, plateau right here is so overpowering. But Har has been just a menace and drop, and this is a huge moment right here for Spermy. He's got to go big. The team's doing the right thing. They're being patient, waiting for Thonharu to suss out where the uh, the remaining player is, and we're about to get some action. Oh, look at that Ewall comes with the, another flank of himself and. P250, Thonharu struggling with the AK, but no scope is gonna happen. And look at that Swan. Manages to live by Spermy missing that shot, but 30 seconds ago, AWOL's just filtering back, but he chooses to throw the utility, and he's gonna go down. 25 seconds, this player can make its way. Oh, Spermy. Oh, just a second too early. God, a 1v1 15 seconds ago, and Swan stampedes onto the site 10 seconds ago. Spermy's gonna come out, and he's gonna. Hopefully deny the bomb. Oh, he misses the shot. That's so huge. And Swan can actually make this happen. But no, the P250. What? Spermy missed that shot. And he's actually looking as well. He's like, how did I miss that? <laughs> that that's what you call an IGL. You're trying to op right there. This yeah. is what happens. I think it's kind of like one of those situations too. Uh, I'm not sure. Like, you've probably been playing CS for quite some time. But in CSGO, when the player, like a T player, plants the bomb, and the model just gets really unpredictable. Oh, I understand. Yeah. I agree entirely. I don't think that was one of those situations. I think he just missed pretty badly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I know I understand how bad the hitboxes are on planter, uh, on planters, but I don't think that was one of those occasions. Maybe I'm wrong, but that didn't look like it. Yeah, you're definitely right. Spermy agrees too, but loss bonus, like I said, as max, it's gonna be the bomb plant. Give him 800 a piece, which leads to an off into Swan's hands, hands, and a wall. They contested two players and no, they don't even check close right. And that will pay the price as Freedom Bandito and Tanharu go down to A wall. And the bomb still on a default, but it seems like GSU has started these rounds like kind of 3v5. And now, mind you, it's now a 2v5 situation. And like, Tezero, we're gonna get that kind of dissect how these gun rounds have been happening, but like, what in God's name is. Why is it not working out for GSU? And look, Swan goes down. Mochilla, you know, picks up a kill. He seems like the only player here for GSU to find frags. This is an, this is an absolute disaster. Uh, the One of the worst things that you can do as a T side on, on Kabul is allow the CT side to set up as a 3-2 every single time. Yes, there you go. 3-2 yeah. is super comfortable because Anchoring A solo is never fun nor comfortable because there's so many angles you have to watch. And once you're pushed back out of uh, long A, you're basically useless. So what, what's what's gone wrong here is that the GSU team has no good A presence. Right now. Uh, and Chilis they're not even through. checking. They're not checking these corners. Well, Chillis is kind of like scrimming, pugging against them. 
and in a way it's worked sort of but i definitely agree with you 100 percent like they need to yeah. take this you from... have to establish the default yeah like, nothing's gonna nothing's gonna work here if they if they would have uh you know committed maybe four players to pushing towards a at the beginning of the round and clearing things out getting mid control getting along a control flashing this the cts back they might have a chance you know open up some values on drop but i mean this is this is rough this looks pretty grim right now oh uh, now they're finding some kills here but it's all due to robert morris being too aggressive well she will be aggressive as he will finding the last two and this is a big 10-0 and uh you know when does a pause come through do you pause on the T side like this? Like, when should it have happened? Why do you think it's not happening? Oh, uh, I mean, it just looks like they don't really care, honestly. Oh, they, there <laughs> there it is. I'm like, okay, come on, guys. Like, you've gotten like the past few gun rounds now. It's gonna be a gun round the next round. Like, let's do a pause. And that's why I said that. But here we go. Uh, and Tesla, I'm gonna pick your brain. What do you think? Uh, they're trying to figure out here. Like in this well, class. they're probably and asking each other, like, because in the rounds are going so fast, they're probably asking one another, "Wait, what's going on? What's going wrong?" Because is there's so much chaos and things are going so by so fast. You know, if I'm in their position, I'd wait for the next gun round, obviously, and you gotta establish an A default. You gotta throw a lot of utility towards B to keep the opera from getting too aggressive and getting too much info. But you gotta establish an A default, or it, I mean, you're just kind of coin flipping that you can just take B with brute force. Ah, coin flipping, CS:GO. You're definitely right. Like, in the sense, they're not, tr I guess, deeming themselves. Is okay. Oh, they don't need to know that. I don't think they need him, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it's that's something. But look at this aggression towards drop and a wall. He changed it up. He actually probably expected a, a drop rush and played from window. Well, she's gonna pick up a kill as well. Aggressive from alternate. We'll finally go down to scrub wrecker. We able to pick up a rifle, Lennox. Not sure if you realize that Mochil is really close by, but looks like someone's gonna spot him out. Headshot. Actually, that was a cushion to a kill, but yeah, you're definitely right with um, like their default. I mean, just look at that round. Yeah, it's. Well, uh... she is playing solo A because Lennox was AFK and spawned for the first ten seconds. Who knows what he was doing? And while she said, still says, I don't really care. I'm just gonna push along A by myself, and he still oh, gets two frags. Yeah. Like, I mean, if that doesn't show, or he got one frag, I thought he got two, but only one, but still, that just shows the kind of game that's being played right now. They don't really have any respect for the GSU team. Yeah, AWOL pushing through will sacrifice his life. Actually, I think RMU follows a similar rule. Um, I think they just send two out, gladiator style. Whatever gets done, gets done, and then the rest of the three kind of play somewhat passive depending on the information that's being given. And actually, we've seen this probably in the past four rounds like this. It's usually two RMU players dying, and the rest of the three just kind of clean up. And... Absolutely. And just because I'm saying that they're, the RMU is playing like really puggy style right now doesn't necessarily mean they're a puggy team. It doesn't necessarily mean what oh, yeah. they're doing doesn't make sense. That's true. One thing that I've seen from them so far is that they actually have just excellent flashes for one another like they're they're playing nice stuff. like while she and lennox you know they're playing setups for while she's been flashing him in spermy has been throwing flashes on b and everyone's really been throwing flashes and the flashes have just been money but right now it's like a fast uh, b hit well, now these races among finds too and the train has stopped but it's gonna be picked up here by reality finally goes out after getting a 3k now a wall towards statue followed by spermy who's Dishing out some utility, but well, AWOL's gonna pick up one player towards stairs, and now Frito Bandito from the flank, Lennox. Man, honestly, I would hate to play against RMU. Look at how fast they are. Um, like to be on the flank, right? That's happened maybe three, four times now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's only two people actually on the site at the time on B when that XU came in. So it was basically reality against five at that first choke point. He was entirely by himself, and he was able to just to stall it out and break up a bunch of kills. This is definitely very scary. And I bet, you know, some of these top 10 schools are definitely watching this game, trying to see what Robert Morris has got cooking. And I, even myself, I, I, we've seen these guys, you know, be the top Titan, but what are they capable of? And we're seeing it here yet again. It's 12 0, Georgia State. You know, oh my god, that. Really? Did you see that player fly? Uh, that that no, last tick. 
Onto Mochilla. I think he would have survived that last tick, but it's unfortunate. He tried to pick a, a fight to his alternate. But once again, it's a 3v2. It's always a 3v... Oh, Lennox. Oh, oh. <laughs> he had to kill him after that. Uh, I guess they wanted to go for some style points. We've seen this before, actually. The last time we saw RMU on stream was actually on Cobblestone. And uh, now look at this, though. Potential first round here for GSU. 50 seconds to go. The bomb's going to get picked up here by Scrub Wrecker, but he's actually a little paranoid. that's being watched. Now, reality, 100 HP. He's got utility. He's got diffuse kit. But Scrub, he's got 15 HP. And like, what is his best action to take here, Taz, real quick? I mean, in a map this big with so many avenues and such little information for Scrub, you just gotta cross your fingers and hope for the best, honestly. <laughs> right now, with 25 seconds, he's looks like he's gonna be running into Reality's waiting arms. Oh no. But the op shot, if he can actually find the information where this player is, oh, the angle is definitely not in his favor. I wouldn't even check that if I was Scrub. Maybe, like, just have my op out look towards the ledge, but that's such a tight angle. And now we're that seeing. That makes a lot of sense to the play that yeah. he made. Because, uh, he. he... Reality could have been pushed through B halls since he's the B, the B like plat player. So he, B really wasn't an option there, while, even while for us as, as observers, it seemed like, you know, he could have just rammed B and gotten a free bomb site. Mm -hmm. Logically, it just doesn't make sense. Yep, that is true. Now, this buy though, out from Georgia State, off onto Swan. His teammates actually burst out a B plat. AWOL's able to pick up a kill towards drop. Reality's still hanging out, holding it down. He's actually... Look at that utility, like you said. The nade's being dropped in. There's already a player flanked up. What? Reality picks up one kill. Walsh picks up another. They should check Cubby. Walsh is going to fight that. And you will lose to Scrub, but... <laughs> how did, yeah. Wait, how did Walsh get between three players? I think he, uh... Did he just jump through the smoke? I think he might have. Yeah, he probably jumped through the smoke. That was like really, yeah. Uh, for some reason, I thought he was boosted up. That would have been so insane if he do, if he was though. Now it was interesting. They were doing all that at B aggression, but at the same mm -hmm. time, they had one guy with an op just holding the A flank. Interesting. Not I guess they they could have been just trying to bait out the aggression, but that didn't work at all. Robert Moore is too smart. Yeah, and this is like I think every player on RMU has like that crazy mentality like a like a 200 iq player you know what i mean this is like they they understand the situation and then they take advantage of it we saw that there when he jumped through the smoke and got behind those two players starting off a pretty crazy choke point at plat. i mean i wouldn't go that far i mean they're not like gods like they're not like they're not like in this uh, situation they're, they're i mean they're human yes, yes well in compared to gsu definitely they look like they don't make mistakes but it's just not true <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> Lennox. Yeah, I mean, that was, was that necessarily the 200 IQ play? I don't know. No, 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 no. I mean, like, in the heat of the moment of, I guess, five, uh, like, five up, five up type deal. In that situation, the players technically, like, the GSU technically had plat control, but then again, they weren't really peeking out to site. So it's kind of argued that they just kind of just got stuck and put there. But, I mean, no, like, I, like, I'm not trying to say RMU players aren't smart. They're all great players. I'm sure they're, they're all intelligent, but they're not superhuman. They're not, they're, you'll see mistakes from them, sure. Oh my goodness. Lennox, after aggressive alternate play, misses a shot. Followed by Welshie's aggressive mid play, finds two kills. But now, Mo Chilla, Scrub Wrecker, and Swan forced to kind of recollect the round here, and Lennox. I think he's in a position to just no scope. I'm actually gonna stick it on this guy. What's he doing? Oh, quick scope, but he should die. Here gets traded off by Mochilla. Next up, Spermy's got an op, and he's close by. Danger close, to be exact. But honestly, if I was a GSU fan, if you want anybody in this last uh, round, it's Mochilla and Swan. Equalized out. Bombs could trickle away to A site. Lots of time to work with too. But look at the positioning. Spermy, this is I don't think they realize that Spermy's here and there you go. Denies the bomb planter. Remote chilla. 
And he changes the angle too. It's so smart. Not greedy. Understands it. And in reality, like still, Moach still checking for this angle. He's still worried about the opera. Now, strapped for time. Forced to make a play. Flashes comes out. And we'll find one kill. Oh my kill. god, he saw Sprimmy's gun, but he just wants to run away. And now we're in a 1v1. I think this, this is, is a smart huge. play though, right? This is the right play. Oh, absolutely. Mochilla. Could this be the ace clutch by this man for Georgia State? Could this be the last round in favor of Georgia State of the first half? I'm going to keep it on Mochilla. I'm going to turn off the x-ray. This guy has four kills, ladies and gentlemen. Robert Morris with 14 rounds. Oh my god, Mochilla! An ace clutch! But the just only like that, round. The 16 0 dream is over. Yeah, just like that. Ah, oh, that's a play. That's a play. I'm not here in the game comms, but yeah, the uh, army players were not happy that they lost their 16 0. No. Right <laughs> at all. Oh boy. Mochilla, 16 13. The only positive player, but you know, Georgia State, man, like you gotta shake it off. Like it's playoffs. They cannot sulk now. It's um, having one of their players ace against Robert Morris. Uh, I think if anything, yeah, Robert Morris is unhappy about losing uh, that round, but they got clutched, an ace clutch against them. So here we go. Robert Morris now on the T side. Look a nice little smoke. I think it's a quick connector smoke. But scrum record, he's spraying with the USP, he finds one kill. His teammate Swan in able to find much. The Frito Bandito is gonna be the next player to rotate onto the site in the bomb. And now has been spotted. His teammates, oh my goodness, Spermy. Reality. What? Oh my god! Reality's crosshair play. So he was switching, checking close, deep in sight, and then he switched to you know the the, the balcony there. Back and forth, back and forth, and got the headshot. That was kind of ridiculous. But now, GSU. Um, you know, lost both pistols. Not really much to say. Lennox put out the shoddy. I'm excited to see what he can do with this this round. Maybe give us a little bit of some JW action at drop. <laughs> some fast smokes towards B, and then yep. I just rush out with, these, uh, with the shotgun. Georgia State. Didn't even get a chance to buy a single, like, SMG or rifle. They're just running straight up mid. This is a perfect counter strat, honestly. Look at the, where the CTs are. Oh boy. Oh no, the spray with the CZ, Frito. Actually gets one kill, but AWOL finds one in the site. Right off with the, the shotgun. And Mo Chill gets denied as well. And Frito Bandito. Looking for another, gets it. Is this still doable for GSU? They pick up a shotgun, Swan's on the other side towards, you know, the wooden fence, but... Swan's snake in the grass right here. Able to get the first kill. See, so what if they can pull the run together off of that? God, this could be so huge, but... Every round counts, guys. Oh my god, Swan! He's getting dinked up! Now, Frito Bandito on a 1v2 with just... the sawed off, and... I'm gonna stick it on Frito. He's got two kills. Is it his time to shine? Is it the spotlight for this man to clutch? Bomb's gonna go down. Oh, some personal. He's checking his left. Checking. Let's check his right. That's a free kill. Oh, Frito Bandito! Oh my goodness! GSU will find a second round just like that. Oh my god. Incredible, incredible things we're seeing right now. No, RMU may have the talent, but maybe the GSU player is just more clutch. Oh man. That is Also, another thing, why would GSU ever agree to a Chicago server against RMU? That's a, that's a pretty questionable choice. I don't know if I ever would either. Oh yeah, wow, five ping. Wow. Definitely correct on that. I think they lost the game before they even joined the server, giving them Chicago. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a 
fast play for Robert Morris towards danger, actually. They're going to be up on alternate. Scrub Wrecker with the AK does not want to give one of the most valuable rifles in the game to, to arm you. It looks like these guys are setting up to re-execute on the site. Swan's actually going to find a crucial kill starting this off. But he's actually up against these fast plays and he lines up a collateral swan. He picks up two kills, just one bullet. Freedom Bandito finds another kill. But Spermy all by himself in a 1v4 won't get shut down by Freedom Bandito. And GSU, they find another round and, and with style as well. Incredible. Honestly, looks like they have some wind in their sails. Maybe this will help them. I mean, I don't think that they're going to win this game, but maybe this will help them, you know, bridge into the next. And, you know, help them like mentally readjust, seeing that, you know, maybe they can go up against these players oh god this is insane i, I love the fr oh frito bandito what are you doing man stabs uh ton hard in the back but essentially almost a full eco but armor cz's here for lennox in reality blocks for a wall and walsh and needs doing quite a bit of damage ton haru on the other side of the smoke Four, five RMU players, out they come. The flash is good, but he lines them up. Only do does one kill, but he does a lot of damage. And Frito Bandito back it again with a shotgun. Gets one kill, but the P250 too strong. Swain, or Swan with the op. It somehow equalized out Spermy. He's got, he gets tagged through the wall. He gets hit in the face. <laughs> but look, he's got a shotgun. But Swan, smart to it. In reality, we'll go down. Scrub Wrecker, they understand the situation and they will find another round for GSU. Yeah, Swan is locked in. He hits him through the wall and then dunks on him in the head with an incendiary. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, it's insane. So 15 4. And now a gun round for Robert Morris University. And Tezzer, I'm going to ask you is it over here? I don't know if it's over. I think that uh, maybe GSU can uh, get a few more rounds, but I'm gonna see if RMU actually goes deep into their playbooks for this, or they would just want to, you know, save their strats for a more important match. Because that's obvious. That's possibly uh, a strategy that they might employ right now. All right, looking like a potential B hit. They've actually baited out quite a bit of utility. They've got three smokes, three Molotovs ready to be used onto this B bomb site. Now, mind you, it is a 1 2 2 setup here for GSU. Out comes A wall, gets tanked up by the op. In comes on Haru. And Lane gets two kills. He's done his job. And the statue player, that's going to be Mo Kill, who gets up an op kill. Freedom and Eli pick up one more kill. But now Lennox in a 1v2. After all that, Robert Morris at the disadvantage here. Lennox gets spawned out, finds one kill. Oh my goodness! But Mo Chilla! He clutches once again. It's coming down to the wire now. Wow, that was a, that was pretty incredible, Lennox. He had some nice headshots right there, just showing off what he can do. Nearly had the clutch, but once again, Mochilla coming out big. This man's showing to be one of GSU's strongest players. Yes, indeed. And the double op here for GSU. And looks like Robert Morris on a eco. Slightly bought up. What? I'll play Swan's gonna spot these guys. He adjusts, but he actually misses the first shot. He's gonna regress, finds Lennox, but up close and personal. He doesn't actually get the second shot in. Scrub Wrecker able to find a kill. Swan actually finds a kill through the smoke. Mo Chill now with the up, up close and personal, and the bombs could go down. And if they do forfeit the round here, it's $800 per T player. Ewalt, Tonharu. On the other side of APC, Spermy trying to shoulder peek. He actually gets a nice kill to Swan, but he was so low to start with. The Spermy will go down. And GSU will find nice their sixth there. round. Yeah. They're not easy at all, honestly. And A Rush is pretty difficult to, to stop because you never know really where the T's are coming from until you quite until you exactly see them. So that's not bad at all. I'm really interested to see what uh RV goes for this round. I'd like them to Either try to establish some drop control, maybe get a lurk player down there, or push back the CTs on A, and then go for like a late execute or a late walkout or explode on like the A site. I think uh, I think B's done. You know, I, I think that they, they've they've done enough there that they kind of understand how they're playing, but I think they need to test drop and see what they can do with that. And they might be listening, Des. Uh, looks like they want to hit a drop a little bit. 
Frida Bandito. Uh, I'm not too sure why that incendiary was thrown. I'm not too sure if Robert Morris even did anything to bait that out, but it could just be pure pressure here by GSU to throw that incendiary. But Swan up is good and another <laughs> collateral! What? Swan for GSU finds well she and Linux. That's the second collateral we've seen. And now, like you said, Tez, drop being contested by the bear. Freedom Man Dina has something to say about it. Gets one kill, but he gets straight off by reality. And now, a 2v4 situation in favor of GSU. Now, Spermie's got the op. He's got the bomb. Reality, you know, trying to gain control of drop and make something happen. But they understand. They've got full... Oh, no. Good night, sweet prince. And swing does go down. Reality will finally go down to scrub wrecker. Now spur me all the way towards A. He's hoping for business. Yep. <laughs> He's running. But then again, do you want to find an early pick? Oh god. Oh no. I wonder what that one. Spur me. Find scrub wrecker. Looking the opposite direction. 20 seconds to get the bomb down, and it's Gucci. Tanharu Mochilla. Can they keep GSU alive in this first map? Spur me. He's got no more utilities flashed off. Needs to find an early pick. Put this in a 1v1. Oh, just like that, Todd Howard goes down. And Mochilla can. He clutched this again. He comes up wide, but he gets a shot to the knee. And that's how it ends in the first map. 16 6 for Robert Morris. But, Tez, man, I, I gotta say, I did not expect six rounds for GSU. Yeah, I mean, well, after the start, 